Good morning, and welcome back to The Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin, here with you on Enlightened World Network. And it's another new week. I don't know where the time goes. It's just flying by. Anyway, um, welcome. So today's topic is spiritual bypassing. But before we get to that, let's just take a few minutes to settle in and get connected here. So take a deep breath in through your nose. Hold it and imagine all that energy just coursing through every cell of your body. Imagine it as sparkling light just moving into every part of your being. And exhale and release any tension or stress. And let's take another deep breath in through your nose. And hold it. And imagine all this wonderful energy coursing through you and enlivening you on every level and exhale and release any remaining tension in your jaw, in your back, in your shoulders, in your neck. And now let's just gently place our palms together, softly rub your fingers against your palms so that you feel that wonderful tingling in your fingers and tingling in your palms. And let's allow ourselves to become present to the wonderfulness of being in these bodies right here, right now, in this very special time in history. So today I want to talk about spiritual bypassing. And, and I hadn't, that was a, a very unfamiliar term a while back, and I didn't really understand what it was until I looked into it more deeply and I think that it's something that is very significant for those of us who are really looking to create a much better life for ourselves and a better mindset and um, we have all kinds of tools to be able to do that where we can reframe or we can use transformational vocabulary when there's a negative thought or a negative experience or um, what we're terming or, or deciding is a negative perspective on something. And um, those are great tools to have. However, spiritual bypassing is taking the practice of reframing or um, throwing a positive spin on things uh, that actually is a form of denial. And one of the things we've spoken about a lot is how necessary it is to allow yourself to feel your feelings without judgment and without story to enable them to move through. And spiritual bypassing is kind of trying to put a positive spin on everything while potentially suppressing or denying the truth of the feelings that are really there. In other words, to cover up or deflect or deny the shadow <clears throat> to just try and paint everything with a rosy picture. and. Uh, if you end up painting over, over rot, <laughs> you know that eventually the paint will dissolve and disintegrate. And, and what happens is when we do this spiritual bypassing thing, <clears throat> uh, it, let, it allows the underlying feelings to fester. So let's say I were re I was really angry about something. I might be judging my anger and therefore just trying to reframe it and um, say something positive about it without recognizing, acknowledging, and moving through the anger and and healing whatever it is that's at the root of that. So it's interesting because it's a delicate balance, I think. Uh, between recontextualizing and reframing circumstances and spiritual bypassing because there are there is a, a transformational 
power and impact to being able to recontextualize, reframe the way that we experience something uh, from perhaps uh, what we would consider negative to what we might consider positive. So um, let's say uh, I, I'm not thinking of specific examples right now, but what I can say, good morning, Dido. I'm so glad you're here. What I can say is that in my uh, practice with the core connection work and my coaching of clients, uh, so many of us are really oriented toward transformation and transforming our feelings and we can talk ourselves out of them and we can, we can create new contexts, we can uh, move on in spite of them. And uh, the, the thing is that when we resort to that kind of behavior, it often negates our ability to really take a look at what's truly going on for us. And emotions are an opportunity to see places in ourselves that could use healing or at least some attention in one way or another. So uh, I, I encourage you once yet again to recognize the feelings you're feeling when you're feeling them. And um, as we address them, when they rise, or at least not long thereafter, then we have the ability to really accelerate our own growth. Whereas the spiritual bypassing, what I was saying is that in my coaching practice, I have to, to I, I get the opportunity to say to my clients, hey, I, I know that you can look at this in a positive light and that's great. And right now what I wanna talk to, what I wanna speak into is the part of you that isn't working. And not that we're going to put a, t a bunch of focus on um, how it's not working, but we're going to address those pieces that aren't working so that we can move through to a place of greater wholeness. Because if we disenfranchise these parts of ourselves uh, that we deem less than desirable, then what happens is it's it's almost like creating a pressure cooker. You know, you're just tamping these things down and tamping them down and tamping them down until they explode and express in in uncontrollable ways. Uh, I I've spoken about trust and how there was a good morning, Becky Beckner. Welcome. So good to have you here. Uh, there was a time a long time ago when I was not so good at uh, managing my feelings or interacting with my feelings. I had so much rage and it was so pent up and um, I really judged myself for having those feelings and and I wasn't particularly conscious around them either. And what would happen is that in moments of stress or confrontation, because that anger was so pent up, it would come out in explosive ways. And when it came out in explosive ways, it gave me an opportunity to hate myself even more. And uh, I invite you to move move out of that kind of pattern if that's something that you experience and recognize that if we are able to address the feelings that we feel when we feel them at least to acknowledge them and then perhaps go back at a later time when it might be more convenient to address them and and heal them uh, or heal the underlying issues then you won't have the experience of the explosiveness that 
that I had experienced back in my past. I came from a family that was very angry. And I see these things too as generational patterns. We learn how to interact with each other based on the behavior that is modeled to us. And uh, there was a lot of anger in my household. So it took a lot of work over a lot of time to move beyond that and to also move beyond the shame that I felt around that anger. However, denying those things is a guaranteed way to keep them cemented in place. So um, the spiritual bypassing is something that is really disingenuous to ourselves and to others and is is so deeply a denial of the parts of ourselves that are looking for integration into wholeness, into uh, a deeper and richer expression. So uh, looking at and being willing to confront the, uh, the woundedness and the brokenness that might be there gives us just by virtue of the willingness to address it gives us greater capacity and greater wholeness just by being willing to look without judgment like to see that these parts of yourself that you're not liking and in my case I had a great deal of self-hatred for a number of years by dealing with the shame of the 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 feelings um it, it's so layered right so the shame is layered over the experience or the feelings and it is a, a way of judging oneself uh, to have the shame so there was tremendous self-judgment and tremendous issues around self-worth and what I can tell you is that there is there is a path forward having been very very uh, damaged and broken for a good portion of my life I can tell you that there is a path that you can you know there there's hope there's hope and it takes it takes work it takes it truly does take courage to be willing to face your demons, so to speak, and to face them in a way that isn't dictated by judgment, judgment of oneself. And if there's one guidance, one, one path to healing that I can recommend uh, one thing that will make it a much quicker process it is to find a place to interact with the parts of yourself that you have disliked uh, it from a place of non-judgment and to say okay this is, this is what I recognize. These are the feelings that I'm feeling. These are the stories that I'm telling. And what if I could look at these parts of myself compassionately and lovingly and treat those parts of myself as I would treat a child that I was nurturing in a loving way and find find that place of non-judgment with yourself and that that is the most powerful place that you can move forward into healing from and it I promise you it will accelerate the process of your healing because the judgment is just amplifying and and exacerbating the issues that are already there so we all have our wounds we all have 
the the parts that we have disenfranchised and what we get to do is to reclaim them and honor them and uh, heal them, love them into healing. And I think that might be it for today. Not a lot of comments so far. Anybody have anything to say? I'd be curious to hear what what your input is. Uh, this is the conversation today was about spiritual bypassing. And so what we want to do is to honor ourselves, honor the feelings that we feel rather than the stories, and then look at how we're judging ourselves for having those feelings, then uh, allow that judgment to to be transformed by compassion for ourselves and then we can begin to heal the deepest wounds so with much love and compassion that's it for today and i wish you forgiveness for yourself and the ability and willingness to see the shadow as it arises compassionately and without judgment. Enjoy the programming on Enlightened World Network. I am so grateful to you for joining me in these morning moments. And Dido says, to look at the parts of yourselves you've rejected as in the spirit of inclusiveness is the spirit of inclusiveness as within, so without. Thank you, Dido. Always perfect. So, um, lots of love. Take care.